Hello, welcome to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is whiskey review number 45. Uh, firstly, Happy New Year. This is the first review in 2017. Um, I was intending to get another review done before Christmas, but unfortunately I had a cold for about three weeks. Uh, I can thank my work colleagues for that one. Um, so what we've got, it's a new year. So um, I'm going to start off with something a little bit different. And that is the Glendronach. Uh, Heelan, 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 Heelan will do. Right, okay. Now, Glendronach is a Highland distillery. Uh, the Heelan is an eight year old single malt and it's matured in a combination of bourbon and sherry casks. All right, so if I just pop that over there, try, there you go, like that. All right, so you might have tried a Glendronach before. Uh, I must profess I am a, a bit of a fanboy. Um, it, is, it is up there in, in my top five. Um, but um, Glendronach are generally well known for their sherry, uh, like matured and finished whiskies. They do, I think they're up to about batch 14 or 15 now, the single cast releases, which is what these are here. Uh, all very heavily sherried as a rule. Um, so it is nice to see something a little bit different from them uh, in the sense that it has been matured in both bourbon and sherry. Um, now it's bottled at 46%, so let's start that. And also on the, on the bottle uh, tube here, very clearly it states non-chill filtered, natural colour. And that is one of the reasons that I like Glendronic. They do things the right way a lot of the time. Uh, and with that, putting an age statement on such a young whiskey, single digits, is a very positive thing. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of decent young malts in the market, but the fact that they actually go far enough to actually put the, the age statement on where a lot of people would have just kept the Highland name, or Heelan, however you want to say it, I don't know, um, then, you know, it is a very positive step because a lot of people will just sell you a story and a load of bullshit and it just it infuriates me sometimes, it really does. It's like, oh, I was born in the fires of Moratia. It's whiskey. It's not Tolkien. Um, so, moving on. So, the, um, the healing represents Glendronach's new entry level uh, bottling. Now, in certain markets, you could actually get hold of an eight year old already called the Octarim, but unfortunately, that wasn't available in the UK. So, in the UK, you have the 12 year old, the sadly now discontinued due to lack of stock, 15 year old, which was immensely popular and was absolutely delightful, the 18 year old Allardyce, the 21 year old Parliament, um, 20, no, 30, 34 year old, 24 year old, can't remember now, uh, and all the single casks. So now they've actually taken that back with this eight year old. This is now the official entry level bottling. Uh, retails for around uh, 30 quid, 30 to 35 quid. To be honest with you, the pricing difference isn't great between this and the 12. Uh, they are quite similar in price. So make that what you will. The 12 year old is more heavily sherried. Um, so without further ado. Okay, there we go. Natural color. Nice golden colour to it. I'm not going to give it a stupid colour name this time because it is real. Um, nah, sack it. Mermaid hair. Right. So, on the nose. It is a lot different to the 15 year old and the 12 year old. A lot different. But it's still got a really nice, rich meaty character and I don't mean the senses in sort of like a literal meat flavour but it's just very you know oomph it's got a lot of oomph to it a lot of depth quite chunky so initially on the nose I'm getting a lot of barley uh, sort of toasted oats honey a lot of honey on there slightest wisp of smoke funnily enough um, which uh, which is quite unusual you could say uh, Glendronic do have a peated release. I did forget to mention that one, which is a no-age statement whiskey. Um, 
and uh, you know that that's about 35 to 40 quid as well I've not actually tried that one to be honest with you so um, hopefully I'll feature that in a later review there's also a kind of like green apple in there as well which I know is a bit of a cliche with a, with a lot of whiskey reviews and that but there, it's very noticeable it's sort of a very clean cut crisp fruit uh, cutting right through that sort of heaviness of the oats and the honey. A little toffee. And the slightest hint of licorice, but not a lot, thankfully, because I hate the stuff. I'm just going back to it, there's a little bit of vanilla in there as well. I am going to try it with, uh, with water as well in a bit. So onto the palette. Mm. Lovely thick oily mouthfeel, coats the tongue, coats your gums, more honey, a little whisper smoked back. Werther's Originals, Toffee Sweets. Like really good, very sweet, very sweet coming into the finish. Goes sort of golden syrup. I was going to go treacle, like black treacle, but no, it's a lot sweeter than that. You do get the vanilla again from the from the nose. The finish is very warm. It's not bitter. It's very very long, still going, and it is also incredibly sweet. Um, I think initially, just off the bat. There's a very, you can tell that the cast are very well balanced. The cast makeup to me is very well balanced. Um, the sherry isn't too overpowering. I imagine it spent the majority of the time in, in bourbon, to be honest, or the majority of the whiskey is um, from bourbon, sorry. And um, it's, it's actually nice where a distillery hasn't gone OTT on the sherry, which can just be incredibly overpowering. Um, and you can lose, in my opinion, a lot of the sort of subtleties that um, bourbon cast not maturation or even like a decent hogshead can actually bring. Um, and you know, it can often overpower the actual spirit nature itself, you know, like the, the actual distillery quality, its uh, little quirks and, and tweaks and that. Um, initially, very good, very good indeed. Just quickly going back to the nose then. Still getting vanilla, still getting the sort of sweetness there, but there's also like a lemon hint as well, like lemon rind. Mm. Palette is quite spicy, savoury spice, almost like. Please don't judge me. Please, just do not judge me. You know, like a spice mix that you get for fajitas and things like that. <laughs> but that's sort of within all this sort of like really nice sort of vanilla, the honey, and it works very well. It really does very well. It's it's surprisingly the entry particularly, and you know as I was sort of saying on the nose with the with the apple, it is surprisingly crisp and quite precise. And it still retains a little bit of chunkiness. So what I'm doing, I've got about that much, that much uh, whiskey left. It's 46%, so I'm not going to put too much in. I'm just going to put two teaspoons. There you go. Just let that, uh, let that sit there for a little while. So as I say, yeah, I do apologise for not getting another review up before Christmas. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't smell anything for three weeks. It was so annoying. Luckily, it shifted just before Christmas, and then. Um, I've just been drinking constantly since, to be honest with you, so I've not had time to do a review. Um, what did we do last time? We did the Glenmarnock 28 in the last review. After the Glendronic, I wanted to get, get this one done first, because I've got something very special to do after this. And it's going to be five reviews, or six reviews, should I say. And it's going to feature some very, very, very old whiskey. Um, courtesy from Gordon McPhail have sent me samples of their new Speyside collection uh, which if you haven't seen it is a collection of old malts from the Speyside region from distilleries such as Glen Grant, uh, Strathyla, places like that 
and the, uh, some of them are very old, very old. Incredibly privileged, so, you know, but I will take them for the merits. It's not going to be a case of, oh, look how old it is, 101 out of 100 as a score. No, 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 no. So we've got that to look forward to. So uh, the next uh, the next few reviews after this will be those basically lined up because um, you know I really want to get them done. I really want to try them. So water still got nice legs on the on the glass there. Interestingly, on the nose, it has taken some of the sweetness out. Some of the depth has gone straight away. But it does retain a sort of vanilla profile. There's a lot more of that lemon there. Bay leaves. And if you're watching in the UK, refresher sweets. Uh, if you're not in the UK, they are like these little tablet-like um, sort of sour, fruity, sugary, sherbet type sweets. They're like shape a little. It look like little barocas, basically. There's something at the end of that I can't put my finger on. So moving on to the palette. Mouth feels still pretty decent. It has thinned off a little bit. Still getting a lot of similar flavours, a lot of toffee, still very sweet. Icing sugar, chocolate cake. A little bit of that sherry dryness now. That's actually a lot more prevalent with water. Green fruits again, so I think apples. And just going in towards the finish now, it softens quite a, lot, uh, quite a bit. So like pears, um, a nice sort of fruity, juicy pear. Um, and the finish is a lot shorter, uh, it's not as powerful, it's not as forthright, but um, it is quite still quite sweet, but uh, whereas previously that sweetness was like a very thick honey, now it's more like a sort of sugar syrup, if you know what I mean, um, so uh, there's not as much, much to that. Um, I certainly prefer it without water, but each to their own, and I think, you know, some drums it, it does make them better, others it um, keeps them about on a par, and then there's the, there's the group where it kind of takes it a little bit off the path. Um, so, overall, a lot of toffee, a lot of honey, I think it's like butterscotchy, like I mentioned before, Werther's original sort of thing, that is pretty much that in a, in a bottle. Um, so very enjoyable, um, makes a nice alternative to more heavily sherried um, offerings that Glendronach provide. Um, I, I would actually recommend picking one of these up if you see it, if you get it on for, you know, for a decent price anyway. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay more than 35 quid for it to be honest with you and I think that's the higher end to be fair. Um, mainly at this sort of uh, price point but it yeah, does have the positives of 46% non-chill filtration, bang. No added colour, bang. Um, one thing worth noting with Glendronic, uh, it was shut for a long while. They've basically been firing stocks out the door and bottling their old, uh, their old casks in the single um, cast ranges and things like that. And the 15 year old, as I mentioned, has been discontinued because it was that popular and the stock was that short. They actually ran out of stock. Uh, Glendronic was purchased by Billy Walker. Um, who was uh, basically taking on the Ben Reich distillery uh, as well and also uh, the Glen Glasser distillery um, or however you pronounce that one, can't think of it off the top of my head so there was basically three distilleries including Glendronic and then <laughs> earlier this year Billy, Billy and friends um, were bought out by Brown Foreman Group who were an American company, could almost say conglomerate I suppose uh, who run Jack Daniels Distillery? So uh, yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. I'm I'm hoping that they don't, to be frank, fuck around with it too much. Sorry for the language, um, because if they do, I swear to God, 
I'll, I'll fly to Tennessee and just... So let's hope they don't Jack daniels if I it and that you don't see Glendronic with no age statement in like a 10 litre bottle on the Asda shelf at Christmas for 15 quid. I'm sure they won't because it's got quite a small like production capacity of around 2.5 million litres a year. Um, but we'll see, won't we? Just wipe the bead of sweat from my forehead. So anyway, score. Um, I'm going to give this little uh, little drum uh, an 85 out of 100. Um, I think it's very well made. I think the cast makeup is very solid. I think it's a very honest offering. It's good to see an age statement on such a young whiskey. Um, and it's a decent price point as well. Offers a lot of uh, bang for your buck. Thanks for watching. See you soon.